Hey everybody, if you've clicked on this video, you've probably read the title, so you know what this is going to be about. We're going to be looking at the source code for Pokemon Gen 2. That's gold, silver, and crystal. A few days ago, I made a Pokemon... Ugh, damn. I made a video about the source code for Pokemon Red and Blue. So if you haven't watched it, why don't you click that top right button on the corner and come right back when you're done. So in that last video, I couldn't find the exact size of the Generation 1 Pokemon games. But thanks to some random guy on the internet who were completely believing, Gen 2 is twice the size of Gen 1, and we're about to see exactly why. So if you haven't already, like the video and subscribe for more cool content. So we're right back to the same GitHub code repository from the last video, and I'll make sure to link it again in the description. The first thing we'll do is go to the data folder and then Pokemon, and then we see the first major change between this generation and the last. There's so many more Pokemon, 100 more to be exact, mainly because of the newly added Johto region. And looking at the stats for one Charmander, we see that the stats representation is different too. Now special is split into special attack and defense, and now Pokemon can hold items. So you can use that old experience share to train your useless Magikarp. Oh yeah, and also hatching, eggs, and breeding were introduced in Generation 2. Each Pokemon had a set number of steps needed to hatch their eggs, and they were also placed into egg groups because, you know, not every Pokemon could breed with each other. It's kind of funny how, in a kid's game, they introduce breeding as an actual in-game mechanic. Funny. Let's check out some of the egg moves. These are the moves that a Pokemon that just hatched can immediately learn from the jump. And some of these egg moves are nice. Bulbasaur has Skull Bash. Charmander has Belly Drum. Like, these are some... These are nice. I can't remember using the breeding mechanic when I was a kid, probably because I didn't really understand how it worked, but I'm sure it would have been useful. I did use them a lot in Pokemon Ruby, which hopefully I'll talk about in a later video. For now, let's check out the trainers who are inside of this party assembly file. The way this file is organized, all the gym leaders are right at the top, so we can see Faulkner, the flying gym leader. Uh, wow, that is a throwback. I can't remember him. And then we have Whitney, who was a normal type gym leader and Bugsy. There was a bug? <laughs> there was a bug gym? What? I don't remember this at all. So if we scroll down a little bit further, we'll get to the rival group section, which is Pokemon that your rival picks based on your starter Pokemon. You know, because he always has to get one up on you for some reason. So quick break for a second. Remember how I said this game was twice the size of the last generation? That's because the Kano region is stuffed in here at the end of the game, and you can actually fight the last eight gym leaders of Pokemon Red and Blue. It's crazy. They just combine these two games together. Now let's take a look at the wild Pokemon section. We'll start with the fish assembly file and it'll look a little complicated but we can try to piece together what's going on. Judging from what you can see here, there's a bit of percentages and old, good, and super which correlate to the type of rod you have. From here we can infer that based on what rod you had, the selection of Pokemon varied from not just useless Magikarp. Fishing was such an underrated part of Pokemon. Like not only could you go into the grass to find them, you could just go in the water, take out a rod, and just fish. I don't know, as a kid from New York City, people didn't exactly go on fishing trips all the time, so I don't know, I guess it just opened my world up a bit. So another cool area of this code is in the text folder, where we can see the ready-made dialogue for the game. Simple, but effective. So as I mentioned again in the prior video, Pokemon was mainly built with assembly in its early years. To get an idea for how difficult it is to make video games with that language, let's check out this file here, where the HP bar is animated. Assembly works by interacting directly with the memory registers of a machine. If that sounds unfamiliar to you, that's for a good reason, since most modern programming languages abstract away all that memory data stuff for you. It's incredibly hard to visualize what you're building with this language, so the small team of four programmers at Nintendo truly built something amazing. I think that's a good place to leave this video off. There's so much more to this game that this video couldn't do justice and I'm just happy to be sharing my own experiences on it. Pokemon Gold was such a... To be honest, I kind of don't remember playing it as much as some of the later versions, but hey, it's a legend in its own right. So let me know what you think about this type of format of video. Do you like digging into the source code of Pokemon with me? Are you hyped for me to do Generation 3? A uh, generation I'm actually pretty familiar with? Then hit that like button, subscribe, and comment below. Thanks for watching.